Hi, beautiful people. It's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent. I hope you're doing great. It's beautiful springtime in Cleveland, Ohio, and today I'm going to talk to you about 10 scents that I find to be easy reaches or perfect for the spring. Um, this idea was presented to me by a uh, fellow YouTuber and friend Margie Louise, so thank you Margie Louise. Um, to those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This mostly focuses on all things perfume and fragrance related and an occasional additional DIY or creative project. Um, to those of you returning, thank you so much for subscribing. All of you, if, I, if you appreciate this video or content, I hope you'll consider giving the video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And you'll click the red subscribe button so we can stay in touch. I welcome ideas such as this, thoughts, questions, challenges. So I'll dive right in. Um, when I think about what it means to be an easy reach or um, an easy grab, to me that basically says like what's perfect for this topic and that it's either accessible or you can, it's either somewhat affordable or accessible and even if out of commission you can still somewhat find it and somewhat affordably. So I have 10 cents I'm going to talk to you about to me that are quintessentially spring. I'm going to start with an OG. Dory Simo by Christian Dior. Um, this can be cost prohibitive. It's the reason I didn't own it for years and years and years. I would go to the Dior counter at Saks, spray myself, talk about buying it. I could never do it. And I finally found a vintage bottle for a really great price. I think I paid 40 for this vintage bottle. It's 1.7. It's an EDT, um, but I find it lasts, especially if you put it on clothing or hair. Um, and uh, this was created by, um, first it was created in 1956, still going strong. It's to me one of the best scents of all times, for real. Um, the nose is Edmund Rutinitska. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, there are many, many, many florals in this. I think there's sandalwood, um, many, many things. But to me, what comes out most is lilac. Lily of the Valley, and a little bit of Ylang Ylang. Um, for those of you who don't know, lilac is a scent, I forget there's a term for this, that cannot be extracted from the flower. So if they were to go through the motions of, you know, things that need to happen to extract scent, it wouldn't work. And so typically when you smell lilac and fragrances, it's an accord or it's a mixture of things or a representation of what lilac smells like. And I think this is one of the closest things to lilac. Um, for those of you who are interested in lilac, I'm going to do a whole series coming up in the next few weeks of all my favorite lilac scents. Um, but this to me is one of the best and one of the first. Dorissimo by Christian Dior. Smells like class too. It just smells gorgeous. I think this could easily be a signature scent for somebody. It's tremendous. All right, next. Um, another one that I've talked about before, but it's just so great. One of my favorite Chanel's, Chanel 19 Poudre. Um, the nose for this, this is created in 2011. Um, the nose is uh, Jacques Poche. Um, and again, many things going on in this. Um, this can be found, I think, anywhere from about $80 to $120. So this is one of the higher kind of end scents, but it's so good. Um, this to me smells uh, mostly of iris and all of its parts. So the root of the iris, the stem, this is one of the most stemmy, green, classy scents. Um, so somehow it doesn't get screechy or cloying. It's still amazing. Um, has a little citrus going on too, but mostly I just get like green stems. It's beautiful. Um, Chanel number no. 19 Poudre, perfect in the spring. So, so good because of the iris elements. Smell like nature in a really bougie way. Um, <clears throat> next, another, this to me f feels like a scent that is done in the vintage tradition, but was released in 2011, but to me just feels so, so classic. It's Cartier's Bager Volet. God, I'm probably butchering that. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, that's Stolen Kiss in French. Um, this is a beautiful, to me, kind of powdery, springy scent. So I'm going to describe to you what's in it. It opens in this really cool, almost like a vintage lighter way. You can find this anywhere from like 
50 to 80 dollars depending on the size of the bottle um the nose is Mathilde Loren and um to me I mean there's many many things in this um but this is Lily 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 and Lily and a little bit of Lily so to me I always think about this around Easter because when I was growing up when we went to church there were lilies everywhere you took lilies as a gift to people and it's just such a beautiful mm, it's like a sweet version of a lily but still kind of bright um, perfect I mean truly this is like spring in a bottle to me Bagier Volet just gorgeous by Cartier perfect for spring Next is a really great buy, like, and it's such a stellar perfume, and I feel like not many people talk about it. So here we are. This is Blue Marine Bellissima. I got this online about a year ago for like, I think I paid sixteen or eighteen dollars for it. I think it's one point seven. First of all, look at. I don't know if you can see the color. It's like a dark pink. It's really pretty. Um, I do want to read you the notes on this because the notes are not exactly what I get. And then I'll tell you what I get. Um, so again, this can be found really cheaply. This was created by Sophie Lobb, the, um, the nose. She did some of my favorite scents like Jasmine Noir by Bulgari. She did CK's Beauty and the list goes on and on. She's incredible. Um, many things in this. The top notes are orange, ginger, grapefruit. The mid notes are like passion flower, jasmine. Uh, it goes on and on. Base notes, cashmere wood, um, musk, sandalwood, etc. I don't get a lot of those things. What I get in this scent is the perfect lipstick scent. And so um, for those of you who don't, um, who aren't into that or haven't heard much about that, um, lipstick scents tend to be things that have elements that lipstick at least used to have in them. Often those were powdery floral notes. So things like violet, things like iris, um, sometimes heliotrope. Um, there is heliotrope, I believe, in this. Um, but these tend to be scents that are floral but powdery. And so this smells very much like the inside of a pocketbook or a makeup bag in the best of ways with perfume elements added. Um, this is gorgeous, like gorgeous. I cannot believe this is, you know, anywhere from 15 to $20 a bottle. It's Blue Marine, and it's a beautiful bottle too. It's heavy as hell. Um, Blue Marine Bellissima, fabulous spring reach, like truly so, so good. Um, yeah, smells like lipstick. <laughs> Next, let's see. Um, so some of you heard, have heard me talk about this already. Frankly, I kind of discounted the house of Burberry. Just uh, it, their clothes aren't always my thing. And so I just, you know, assumed that they were kind of like not my thing too, the perfumes. And then I heard about my Bur Burberry and just so you know, not everyone's bottle looks like this. Apparently mine was painted on, which I think is so, so cool. I bought this used or vintage. Um, this scent came out in 2014. It, what the nose is Frank Francis Kirkajan. So I'm sure many of you have heard of him. His scents, now that he's broken out on his own, are very costly. They're like three to $400 or more. Um, this is created for Burberry. And to me, this is sweet pea, lots of greens, mossy, dewy, and a little aquatic. And it just, it smells like a rainy garden, a rainy flower garden, just starting in the spring. It's beautiful. This can be found for like 30 to 45 to $50. Pretty affordable for a big bottle and just gorgeous. Uh, and I don't have many scents. I don't think I have another perfume that actually features sweet pea. So I was really excited about that. And it smells truly dewy and mossy. So you can probably see a theme. There are certain flowers in the spring. There are a lot of kind of like bright and fresh scents. And this is one that's to me really, really bright. So um, Target used to carry a whole line of fragrances called Good Chemistry. Some of you will know one called Sugar Berry. It kind of smells like pink sugar without the licorice. It's a nice, I think, sugary gourmand scent. Um, but they they just discontinued this line, and the line can be therefore found at Target right now sometimes, or, sorry, at Target and or at TJ Maxx in the clearance section. 
And I got this spray for $3 a few weeks ago. They also have the scent, and I hope to go get it. It's called Mineral Desert. Don't discount these cheapies, y'all. This smells amazing. I would say a lot of these could be unisex. I mean, y'all know, I, I think you should wear what you like no matter where you're at in the spectrum. I wear men's cologne sometimes. Look at me. Um, wear what you like. Um, this is, um, I think was sold as kind of a men's scent. It is one of the best petty grain scents I've ever smelled. Again, it was three or four dollars. Um, it is, so for those of you who aren't familiar, actually, I'm going to link a video down below done by, uh, Boise de Jasmine. Oh, she's incredible. Um, so she is a, I believe, formerly trained nose and she makes videos and she's just, to me, one of the best educational sources out there. She, I forget her name, but she's lovely. She's super well-traveled and she just, her content is so interesting. She actually did a video just today on Pettigrain. Pettigrain is basically like the stemmy, almost woody or hard bud part of the bitter orange plant. And so it's got like a neroli, um, orange flower kind of scent, but more bitter and more um, stemmy. And this scent um, is basically pettigrain, oak moss, and musk. And so you get like the mossiness, you get the stemmy part of the orange. It is so uplifting and gorgeous. It's called Mineral Desert. So if you want to go find, try to find it either online, um, hopefully either clearance on at Target or TG Maxx. Oh my gosh, is this good, you guys. It is so beautiful. Mineral Desert by Good Chemistry. On the cheap. Great, great for spring. So good. Um, okay, four more. This one actually, it started out very affordable, super cheap through H&M. They're not making it at the moment. I hope they either bring it back or that you can find it online still affordably. This was originally like 4 or $5 a bottle. It's called Yuzu. That's what it smells like. So for those of you who aren't familiar, Yuzu is, oh God, is it a Japanese citrus? It's an Asian citrus. And it's kind of, imagine like a cross between, or it smells like the combination of both grapefruit and orange. So it's super bright. This was created by Olivier, um, wait, Olivier Pichot. <laughs> Sorry, I get Polish and Pichot uh, confused. Okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar, this is the same nose who makes the fragrances basically for Diptyque. So really expensive, awesome scents. Did a line for H&M, and this one basically smells like, I mean, exactly like a cross between grapefruit and orange. And it has a few other things that make us, you know, perfume and makes it sophisticated, but that's what really comes through. It's super bright, uplifting, cheerful, I think would be great on a sunny spring day. So Yuzu by H&M. Wonderful. Next is a scent by the independent house called Alchemia out of Amherst, Massachusetts. The nose's name is Shara Lemero. This is called The Libertine. What a great name. You have to look up their website, you guys. They have the most beautiful descriptions for their scents and they find these super old illustrations. And I'm pretty sure the picture that I saw with this is a woman whipping her lover. I'm think with a licorice whip. <laughs> Anyways, perhaps that is what this smells like. Um, let me tell you about the notes. <laughs> this is $18 for an oil or I believe $45 for a one ounce bottle of perfume. Um, to me, it really, really smells like, well, I'll give you all the notes. It's cashmere wood bergamot. The bergamot really comes through. Ja um, Japanese boudoir incense. Not sure exactly what that smells like. Um, botanical pheromones and broxen and licorice whips. So what comes through for me, I'm a licorice freak, and so that's why I wanted to get my hands on this. But surprisingly, a lot of licorice scents are super powdery or deep or candy-like, and I believe me, I'm here for that too. But the bergamot really comes out strong in this, so it's bright in licorice. It's wonderful. A few of my uh, male friends were over recently and I had them smell this and they loved it. It's gorgeous. So the Libertine by Alchemia, really cool. And the brightness of the bergamot, for some reason makes this a spring scent for me. That's what I thought of anyways. Um, 
Next is a scent that really doesn't get talked about much. I think it had a limited run. It um, was made by the Joan Malone house. Um, the nose is Anne Filippo. So some of you will know her because she designed for like Lardison Perfumer. Um, gosh, what else? I'm trying to remember. I think um, Givenchy. I can't remember. There's another house or two that, that many that she's designed for. But this is called, um, I think it's called is it carrot? I'm sorry, you cannot. Here's one of the problems with this bottle. You cannot read it. It is so, 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 so dark. Um, this was part of like a limited spring line. And it's like carrot, I think it's carrot leaf and fennel blossom. I'll put the name in the notes below. Um, but I had to get my hands on it because I love spring scents. I find a lot of them are overly floral. And this was really interesting because it really smells, it smells like carrot leaf. I'm actually going to spray it. Oh, and it smells like fennel, which I love too, which for those of you who don't like anise, you might not like it because it's got that similar licorice -y, very lightly um, in comparison, but still that scent. But it definitely, if you've ever gardened and smelled fresh carrot or carrot greens, that is what this smells like. And I can't think of anything more spring. So this is great. It's not, I would not call this super feminine leaning to me. Um, but to me, so likable. And especially if you like the smell of a garden, it's super cool. You can still find bottles of this online for 50 bucks, maybe even cheaper. Um, and you're not going to smell like everybody else. Hardly anybody knows about this, talks about it, wears it. So last but not least, um, and it's so funny because my friend Leslie, hi Leslie, just today talked about, she was interested in um, hearing about a scent that smelled like rolling in clover. And I was like, hmm. If I got a scent for you, I'm going to do a whole theme based on her idea um, of kind of like childhood memories. But this is Versace's Pour Femme Dylan Blue. This is a 10 milliliter bottle. I think this was 15 or $20. You can find a big bottle for anywhere between like 15 and 75, I want to say. This is, this came out pretty recently. Oh, I want to say, did it come out in like 18? Something like that. Pretty, pretty recently. Um, and it's, it's interesting because I don't have a lot of scents with um, clover. And when I smelled this, this is not typical for me. Most scents that are in the magazine folds are just, I'm like, not for me. They're too mass produced. I hate to say it. I smelled this one and I was like, I totally got the clover and I was so excited. Um, so this is the nose is Calice Becker. Um, a lot of you will know that name because that person designs for By Killian, has designed uh, Calvin Klein, Secret Obsession, Oscar de la Renta scents, Nina Ricci scents, the list goes on. Um, so really great nose. Um, in this scent it are things like Black Current, Shiso, which is like a, I think is a Japanese mm, evergreen, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Clover, Rose Hip. There's some chemically made scents in here. One is called Petalia. I had to look up and that is basically like a, I think it's a Givadon scent um, made up. There's rose, there's um, musk, white woods. Um, gosh, the list goes on. But to me, I get almost all clover when I spray this. It smells just like you rolled in clover and the floral part too. So it's a tiny bit screechy when you first spray it. Literally give it a minute and it is beautiful. To me, this is the closest thing to fresh clover that I've smelled. Versace's Dylan Blue. And I think it would be perfect for spring for that reason. So those are just 10 that come, comes to my mind as, as far as like perfect spring scents. Thanks for the idea, Margie Louise. Um, I would love to hear from you all on ideas around themes that you feel have not been explored much. Um, and tell me what spring scent you're wearing. All right, cheers. Have a great day. Bye.